So the other day I decided to jump back into Caliber, which is a third person shooter that was originally being published by Wargaming, but is now since just transferred ownership to the developers 1C Gaming Studio. So they're, you know, promoting, they're publishing, and they're developing the game all by themselves. And this was a game that I covered last year that I was actually really, really excited about because I myself am a huge fan of third person shooters when they're done right. I know a lot of people look at third person shooters and think that there's no way they can be competitive, but it's just simply because we haven't had one done correctly in almost 20 years at this point. Caliber is the closest thing to that in terms of its gameplay, but still to this day, it can't seem to find a market in North America. And I'm going to talk to you guys about why because I'm super passionate about the business side of this game and for some reason I just want to see it succeed and when you talk about the Russian audience for this game it's succeeding left right and center I'm going to talk about that but for some reason we just can't see it blow up in North America and it's not due to the third person nature because a lot of the most popular games out right now are third person shooters what it comes down to is a list of fundamental flaws with the game design and the monetization surrounding caliber i'm going to talk about it all here so if you guys like the video leave a like on it and subscribe for everything multiplayer shooter related in this industry Caliber has an identity crisis. It's a game that's meant to be played in a more competitive nature. There's classes like Assault, Medic, Sniper, and Support with a bunch of different operators to fill those roles, each with their own set of abilities. And not like Overwatch level abilities, but a little bit more realistic. Some have like gas grenades that slow and stun you. Some have the ability to revive themselves during a round. Some have abilities that you can pop and the following like 10 shots might do like a slow effect and extra damage. The operators in the game are balanced fairly well, and when you come across a team that knows how to play, it's a fucking blast. Even though they might be kicking your ass, it's pretty cool to see. My biggest complaint from last year was some of the operators being hidden behind a paywall. And in Russia, this is fine because the player base just buys the operators that they want to play and they play and it's no big deal. But in North America, a lot of people are quick to jump on the pay to win train in almost every circle that you can imagine. And I've seen the developers defend the practice by saying a few things. One is that there's a rotation on the store every week where you can purchase some operators with in-game currency, which is their compromise for the buying of the ops with real money. So every week you get a choice of three different operators at random that you can purchase with in-game currency. So you can technically earn all the operators with in-game money as opposed to somebody just coming in and buying the operator that they want with real money. That's still there and that's still a problem. You still have to learn the abilities and play the operators to level them up is another thing that developers have said, which is definitely true and I see the angle there, but the idea of having operators behind a paywall at all is just a major turnoff to me and 99% of audiences in the West. Imagine playing a game like Overwatch and half the characters you have to purchase with real money. Imagine playing a game like Rainbow Six Siege where half of them are just locked and then maybe you can unlock a few of them every week while they rotate in and out to buy them with in-game currency and someone can come in and just buy the latest operator with real money and, and there it is. It's one of those things where the devs say like it's not technically pay to win because you still have to learn the abilities and learn how to play the operator but it just leaves a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths in the West. Another huge complaint that I had about the progression in the game was every time you level up, you unlock material crates that give you a bunch of different materials that are then used to basically craft together and upgrade your operator. Now, you can get these containers with random materials for winning games, which doesn't seem that bad, but somebody can come in and go to their storefront and just buy resource packs that offer common materials, uncommon materials, and rare materials as well, which means you can upgrade your operator that you may have purchased with real money with more real money. And the problem that I have with this, on top of the fact that it just feels super scummy, is once you get to a certain level of your operator, you unlock a certain skill tree, which you can then work on and upgrade your character further, which is a direct pay to win scenario as much as the devs don't want to look 
at the problem in front of them because in Russia it works. In the U.S., this is one of the worst things you could possibly do. And I wish the developers would stop trying to compromise and still keep some of these systems in place in North America. Separate the player bases and do something that actually matters in North America. I've done this before, but just seeing how they've made a little bit of progress in this front, but not enough to actually push the player base to you know, a level where you could actually get into a game, I'm going to give the developers a blueprint for success in North America because the game itself is really really solid it's fun to play they've got that nailed it's a high quality free to play game and if you want to keep it free to play but still make money and provide a fair playing ground for everybody jumping into it this is what you need to do all of the operators that you guys see on this screen that have the little yellow icons are ones that you have to buy with real money. The ones with the blue icons here, this one here, that's in-game currency that you can purchase these ones for. And even though some of these operators that you can buy with real money end up on the store page in rotation every week to buy with in-game currency, it's still a problem and it's still, when somebody jumps in for the first time and they see that all of these operators are able to be bought with real money, it's, it's an instant turnoff. So, what you have to do is make all of these in-game currency purchasable only. Don't sell any on your website, don't sell these ones in-game, and allow us to earn our operators through playing the game. When you go to each operator, you can customize their camo colors uh, as well as, you know, their their vests, their helmets. You can customize their emotes and you can customize their executions. For some of the colors, you can purchase them with in-game currency. Allow us to earn every operator in-game with in-game currency only and then take all of the cosmetics and the customization and the emotes and the executions and tie them to either a battle pass which somebody has to pay for on a seasonal basis, which is where your recurring revenue is now going to come from. And on top of the cosmetics, they also have these things called legendary outfits, which gives you, you know, plus 20% in-game currency, plus 25% experience, as well as contracts that you can then send these operators on to earn more rewards. So on top of the battle pass that somebody pays for, when they unlock an operator, there might be a, a challenge progression line, kind of like how they do in Halo, where if you get to the end of the the challenge pass whatever that is if it's a uh, hundred challenges that you have to complete you might unlock a legendary outfit for that character which would then give you you know plus 20 percent experience or something like that make that unlockable in-game because when you're giving people a boost for in-game currency and xp if you put that behind a paywall that now becomes pay to win get rid of all the pay to win elements and allow us to unlock the operators their abilities and everything that affects gameplay in game and then have cosmetics emotes you know dances whatever the fuck tied behind a paywall and people would get behind it they also have this contract system in place which allows you to send operators on missions while you're offline and they can collect resources and, and materials and shit for you it's a really cool system the problem is is all of these things that they're going out to unlock and get for you you can just purchase with real money and that's where people are just not into it because all of this stuff becomes useless when somebody can just come in and buy it all. That is the main problem that everybody is having with this fucking game. If you take out the resource packs from your website and only allow materials to be earned in-game by doing these contracts, that would make it so much better than what it is right now. On top of that, you guys just did your first Twitch drop event, which from everything I heard went really well. I know I was supposed to be a part of it, but I can't stand playing on Russian servers and uh, NA is just totally fucking dead. And these are the reasons why. You could have a booming free to play title and capture the likes of the SOCOM crowd, the Ghost Recon crowd, and hell, even Rainbow Six to a certain extent, if you just 
monetized it properly. And once those changes are made, the biggest thing is you just got to get the messaging out there that, hey, guys, we listened. We hear you in the West. And the thing is, is every single person who is covering this game, every single person playing it has been saying the exact same things for years now. And if the devs aren't willing to listen, then at the end of the day, it is what it is. Enjoy the rubles you guys got coming in every month. But if you're looking to really blow up in the West, it's just not going to happen. Sweeping changes need to be made for this game to be successful in the West. And I just don't see the devs doing it right now. And it sucks because the game is actually really, really enjoyable. It's really fun. But playing on Russian servers, because they're the only ones bumping right now, is rough. And with the subtle confirmation that it is going to be coming to Xbox, I really hope that these sweeping changes come soon, because they're going to move it to Xbox, and Xbox will have one more pay-to-win shooter that nobody wants to play. My name is Big Fry. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like down below and subscribe for everything multiplayer shooter related. The link to my live stream as well as my second channel is down below. So if you guys want to see live stream highlights just chopped up into nice digestible bits of video, subscribe to my second channel and drop by my live stream. I'm live Monday to Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you on the next one.